Welcome back to the Tycat CFL Draft Show, powered by TELUS. Uh, very, uh, we're hoping to be joined by Farhan Lalji very shortly here from the CFL on TSN. AJ Jakovic from uh, TSN 1200 in Ottawa, the play by play voice of the Ottawa Red Blacks. He's going to be by as well. Let's recap what you may have missed on the draft. I know I promised you uh, the picks as they happen, so I've kind of been slacking, and I apologize. So let me get some picks in here for you. We'll start in the fourth round where Patrick Davis was selected 28th overall out of Syracuse by the Montreal Alouettes. Elliot Graham out of UBC was selected 29th by the Calgary Stampeders. Tommy Neils, McMaster, McMaster boy, uh, a safety. He was taken with the 30th overall pick by the Argos. Uh, Jake Julian out of Eastern Michigan, the first kicker selected tonight, I believe. Let me just double check that. Yes, the first kicker off the board is Jake Julian out of Eastern Michigan. Uh, he was selected 31st overall by the Ottawa Red Blacks. Dominic Johnson out of Buffalo, the first quarterback off the board. Uh, he was selected with the 32nd overall pick uh, by the Edmonton football team. Uh, Toronto had a second pick here in the fourth round. They took Trevor Hoyt out of Carleton. Robbie Lowe's out of Regina was selected 34th overall by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders are on the clock as we speak. And then once again, the Hamilton Tiger Cats will have back-to-back -back picks in this uh, snake draft format. They'll pick with the final pick of the fourth round and the first pick of the fifth round. So uh, as those picks uh, are happening, uh, we will bring them to you as soon as we can. Uh, speaking to uh, speaking of as soon as we can, uh, let's get to uh, Farhan Lalji from the CFL on TSN. Uh, we just watched uh, him and the panel do a fantastic job uh, with the first two rounds of the draft. And uh, now very, very fortunate to be joined by uh, Farhan now. Uh, Farhan, thanks so much for doing this. Um, I mean, what, what's, your, what's your reaction about what, uh, what we've seen so far in this draft here tonight? It was a pretty entertaining draft. That, you know, and for me, like, it's the draft process that I always get amused by than the actual selections themselves. Because if I had talked to all the general managers two weeks ago, and I did, mm -hmm. the feeling from everybody was there was going to be a ton of future picks early in the first round. And, and honestly, I thought we might see six or seven futures picks early as we got into the, um, the final couple of days before the draft, you got the sense that everybody had convinced themselves they really like a specific guy and they want to get him early because they might not be available and there were better futures available later. So you saw more players get picked in the first round that were actually going to be at camp. I mean, I really liked what Hamilton did. I think Jake Burke make, make, makes a lot of sense for them. You know, I was kind of weighing whether or not they were going to pick Terrell Jana or Burt with that pick, you know, because they've been trying to get the receiver thing right as far as a Canadian receiver goes for some time. And they really haven't been able to do that. And, um, you know, I, I know that they like Tyler Trudowski, who they took a year ago. I'm a big fan of Marcus Davis, who played out here at UBC. But for whatever reason, those opportunities haven't been given or earned, however you want to look at it. So I, I think by getting... Uh, Burt, he's a different type of player. You know, I wasn't sure they'd go in that direction because they already had a Nikola Kalinic type of guy. And, you know, I, I kind of see Burt as, as that kind of guy, but I think they feel they can use him a little differently. And, and he's a pretty dynamic player. He's got very good speed for a guy his size. I like that pick. And then Nick Cross, the linebacker they took with the last pick of the first run, that kid is a stud. If he can stay healthy, he could be a starter. Like, I mean, he could give them enough flexibility to go to safety and move Tunde and delicate to Sam or cross could potentially play Sam. If he was, you know, if he, again, if he was, if he was able to stay healthy, the guy's all around the football, he's explosive. He's instinctive. He's a really good player. So, you know, when you look at what they did, then they went with the futures pick with their third pick, um, uh, you know, in the, in the second round that I think if they wind up getting him, he's going to be a really good player. So I, I think Hamilton did well. Um, I thought uh, BC, did well as far as if they can get some of those future guys back, you know, they could be the two top players in the draft. Uh, I liked what Saskatchewan was able to get done, getting two high end athletes in on day one of camp. Uh, and that, including, uh, you know, Lacombo, and then they get Jana late in the second round. So some good players there, some good teams did some good things. Yeah. And when you, when you talk about, uh, you know, just, just the way that the Tiger, the Tigers had, 
like you said, they had they had a need at a national receiver. I mean, there there aren't very many holes that the Ticats needed to fill, but uh, you know, Drew Burke or Drew Drew Alamang, Sean Burke, uh, they 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 got it done. First pick, they they kind of filled the hole that they needed right away. Yeah, you know, and again, like I, I think that you know, you you gotta like the fact that Burke has has played before. Right? He's played pro football before. Yeah. And, you know, when I, when I lay that out, I mean, I think of an Alex Singleton type of player who got into a camp, spent some time in the NFL before he got his Canadian citizenship and then got drafted and came here and had a great career. The thing is, is that when teams look for receivers that are nationals, they typically look for a guy that can play the Z receiver spot, field side wide out. They don't always think of inside players, right? And I, I think with Jake Burt, I think he's going to wind up having to be an inside guy, but I think that's okay, depending on how you want to design your offense, right? So I, I think um, they did well with him, and, and it was a good selection, so I, I think they won there. And, and just looking at the, the embarrassment of riches, I guess, that, that Tommy Condell has it with that offense now, I mean, you're going to have Sean Thomas Erlington, who had such a great start to 2019 before his knee injury. He's going to be healthy, ready to go. You're going to have Jeremiah Masoli. He's going to be ready to go. So I, I talked about this with Berkey earlier, that – um, with Sean Burke, that that the Ticats are creating competition in camp right away uh, with, with a couple of these draft picks. Yeah, they are, and they're building depth, and they're also building their special teams, right? And and I think that matters. So you get a guy that's you know played a fairly physical position in tight end in in Burke. You've got Cross, who's just he, his body is built for special teams. Hmm or his mindset in his game is built for special teams, right? Set a UBC record for tackles last season, um, you know, led the nation. Like, the, the guy is just everywhere near the football. You know, you look at UBC and Ben Haddock, who the Lions took in the third round, and Ben is this big six foot three, six four, two thirty five, 235, ran a 4'5", laser time 40, and you think he's the guy. When you watch film, it's all Nick Cross, right? So he plays linebacker, he plays Sam and, and they're probably going to move them to safety, you know, at some point, right, depending on, on how things go. But, you know, so they've got two guys that can step in and help make their special teams better right away, give them some meaningful depth that if they have to go in and play meaningful offensive and defensive reps, they can do that right now. They can give them ratio flexibility. So those are really good picks. Well, Sam Farhan, really appreciate your insights. I know it's already been a long night for you, and I know the Canucks are about to, to – drop the puck. So thank you so much for doing this. Great to have your insights. All right, Louie. Thanks for having me. Take care. Yeah, you too. There is Farhan Lalji from the CFL on TSN. Very appreciative of him stopping by. Of course, he uh, hosted uh, the draft show there. Uh, so thank you so much for him for stopping by. AJ Jakovic is trying to find his way into the room here. Uh, he is the uh, play-by-play voice of the Ottawa Red Blacks. So we're going to try and get him in the room real quick. We're going to pause for 30 seconds, 60 seconds maybe, but we will be right back with AJ Jakubic, uh, and we'll recap the Ticats' last two picks. Don't go anywhere. It is the Ticats CFL Draft Show, powered by TELUS.